I don't have any idea what happened here. But we can clean it up. One of the things that I intensely dislike about Rotten Dog boards and most aftermarket boards is the connectors they use are just terrible. And you can see this one's just cracked off. My Neolock tester indicating one of the 6821s on the board has failed. And I have this Rotten Dog MPU 9 to 11 finally all taken care of and it is on the bench i really don't prefer these rotten dog boards there's many reasons but one of them is you can see that it still uses round header pins <clears throat> versus the square ones for instance that i installed up here square molex 0.156 breakaway pins are always preferred now this board had a number of problems. <clears throat> One was the, the damage at the uh, ribbon cable connection to the displays. And I suspect that was caused by uh, not quite having enough experience removing a connector. I don't know why the client was trying to remove the connector. And these rotten dog boards, I suspect also, were made with um, lead-free solder, <clears throat> which is a booger to uh, work with or well it's a lot harder to work with I'll say and that connector was uh, damaged significantly so I have put it back together as best I can uh, with jumpers etc and it's all taken care of now the board also had two lamp column <clears throat> circuits failed these two tip 107s plus the ULN 2803 was failed the PIA for switch matrix had failed the PIA for the solenoids it worked but a leg was broken off of it so I hacked another leg onto it and it's good to go now the worst thing was the sound section and this is the rotten dog <clears throat> kind of equivalent to the original system 11 n or nothing sound system and it includes a 1408 digital to analog converter and there were two trim pots here, one, and there was one there. This trim pot trims the volume coming out of the 1408 DAC so that you can balance the volume between what comes out of the DAC here and what comes out of the CVSD, the continuous variable slope, the, I don't know, uh, part which is at this location on this Rotten Dog MPU. So it is good to go now. I suspected I was gonna have some residual issues with the display after working on that connector so much, but we are good to go. Let's boot it. Let me back off so I can show you both the LED operation at boot and the display operation. Displays are up. Huh, that's interesting. Got that beating. <laughs> and I apparently touched this ribbon incorrectly. All right, we are back. I did not have this ribbon connector on quite all the way, so it's good to go now. You can see there is a little beating in the display. I don't see that. This is a difference between, or an interaction between my camera shutter speed and the beating of the what used to be fluorescent lights are now LED lights, and I'm sure they're beating at 60 cycles per second. The lamp matrix is pulsing like it should. I never noticed this right-hand column sort of seems to go up like that. And the only solenoid that's on right now is the coin lockout solenoid. So let's go into test. Oh, and I do have my own background soundboard attached down here. This is my new bench. I've got a little bit to work out yet with routing some wiring. It looks kind of ugly right there, but uh, this is the first instantiation <clears throat> and I'm gonna, I need to get me some more zip tie. Get me some more, that's the way we say it in Missouri, zip ties. <laughs> The 
background music's working perfectly. And here is display test using my multi-system 11 and data east display test panel designed by my friend in the Pacific Northwest, Mr. Victor. And the displays are working perfectly. And that is what a working high-speed sound system is supposed to sound like. Lamp test. <clears throat> Individual lamp test. Solenoid test. Seven, eight, and high-speed being one of the first System 11 games, it does not multiplex any of the solenoids. It's just a straight up first 16 coils. And now it's doing the special solenoids, which I also need to test by triggering, for instance, a spoon switch on a pop bumper or a slingshot. The last special solenoid on high speed, strangely, is used to control a flash lamp in the back right corner of the playfield. Switch edge test and the last switch on high speed is switch 52. So let's go through switch one, 10. Get my fingers correct here. 51, 52. So the switches are all working correctly. Now we're into the audits and eventually adjustments. I can't remember the adjustment number for free play, but let's hit that on the way by. It should be 23 if I remember right. 23 or 18. I don't know. I do so many different game systems that sometimes it's really hard to remember. There it is. It is on free play already. <clears throat> oh no, it says no down there. Now it's on free play. So I'll just quickly advance through all these and we are back up and running. So thank you so much for sending this. I do appreciate it. It's quite an adventure dehacking the connector up here. It's all better now and you should be enjoying some high speed by Christmas. <laughs>